All right, so a little discussion on the microscope. Um, everybody's probably used a microscope by now, but if you haven't or you don't know all the properties of a microscope, now wouldn't be a bad time to learn them because microbiology uses the microscope for everything, okay, or some form of microscopy for everything. Um, so anyway, the lenses of a microscope magnify images, okay? That's the ocular lenses and the and such. Um, and basically, they make images larger. They don't necessarily give better resolution, okay? So they're two separate things. I just want to separate that right off the bat. Magnification and resolution are not the same thing. So the amount of detail that can be seen is called resolution, all right? Um, and resolution is defined by the ability to distinguish two points as separate. So, I mean, it sounds kind of strange, it's, but it, it, it's basically, again, the amount of detail one can see in an image. And it's different than magnification, which simply means larger image. So humans have a limited resolution, okay? They only have about 150 micrometers. So you might be saying, you know, 150 micrometers, that's kind of small, but it's not small enough for your average microbes, which, you know, might be somewhere between 5 or, or in some cases, even smaller to 20 micrometers. So resolution is ultimately limited by wavelength of the light source, okay? So it's, it's a, or whatever energy is being used. I call it an energy source. So the resolution is limited, and it's limited because of this energy source, and it'd be mostly because of the wavelength. And, you know, in the case of a light microscope, the resolution is limited by the wavelength of light. So the general principle, which is an important one to remember, is that the shorter the wavelength, the greater the resolution. Okay, short wavelength, greater re resolution. It's kind of an important topic. Kind of an important point. So the electron microscope has greater resolution because the electron beam that's being used has a much shorter wavelength, and that's an important concept. You know, this that's why electron microscopy. Um, you'll see a lot of those electron micrographs in your textbook. And the reason you see those is because they are high-resolution images. They really let us see what's going on. If we're talking about scanning electron microscopes, we're talking about the surface of whatever we're viewing, the bacteria cell, let's say. And if we're talking about transmission um, electron microscopes, we're talking about the internals. We're looking at the DNA or something. We're looking at mitochondria and yeast. I don't know. And... Um, and that's what we want to be able to see. So the light resolving power of a light microscope um, is 0.2 micrometers or 200 nanometers. Okay, so pretty small. But an electron microscope has a resolution or resolving power of 0.2 nanometers. So much smaller in comparison. There's also this concept of refraction, okay, or light bending of microscopes. So, you know, when the light travels through, the, it, it bends. When it travels through an object, it bends. Um, so there's this idea of refraction. Um, to prevent light from scattering and not being captured by the objective lens, we use what's known as immersion oil. And immersion oil has the same refractive index as glass. And it's very useful in the lab, and especially if you're dealing with a light microscope and you want to look at bacteria. If you want to look at bacteria in the lab, you need to use immersion oil, and you need to use about 1,000x power, which is the highest power on most, microscope, most light microscopes. And you'll be able to see in very limited detail, but at least be able to make out like such things such as gram staining. You'll be able to see gram negative, gram positive, etc. So we use immersion oil for that reason. And then there's this scanning electron microscope, which I already talked about, which is if we want to look at the surfaces of objects, so the whole surface is layered with some kind of metal, okay, and the images are made of the surface. And then transmission electron microscopy, so thin slices of the specimen have to be prepared, and um, the sections are each layered then with metal, and this allows us to see the internal structures, DNA, ribosomes, flagella, viruses, even viruses, um, that otherwise would not be seen. So.